Hello, I'm Shelly Quinn. I'm J.D. Quinn. And we wish you a happy Sabbath. Amen. 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 We're so glad that you're joining us for family worship. Tonight, we will begin. This will be part one, and I'm not mm. sure if there will be only one more part after this or more, but what tonight's topic is going to be is grief mm. the way out. You know, there's so much going on mm. in our world, mm. and we have circumstances around us that are sorrowful. They lead us into that deep sorrow. And we need to understand the process of grieving and understand that God will lead us out. If you haven't experienced personal grief, just wait, it's coming. But I know that everybody knows someone that has been grieving. And so we want to welcome you we're so glad you're joining us and take notes through this so that you can share with people and let God, who is the God of all comfort, use you to comfort others. Amen. Honey, you want to introduce I certainly our do. special I, I certainly do. Members. The good news here that we're going to be talking about today as far as I am concerned, there is a way out. Yes. You know, that's so important. So... But first, let's introduce everybody before we start finding a way out, okay? And we got Darrell and we got Sasha. Yeah. So glad to have y'all. Good you to know, be here. Yeah. We've uh, been around each other a number of times, and it's always fun. You know, yes, you're a lovely really couple. Does. We got Ian and Angela. Amen. 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 Love y'all. Thank you, you know? for having us. Yes. Amen. And we have our precious Terry over here. Terry. It's wonderful that you're here with us. Delighted to be here. You know, and of course, next to me, as she said a while ago, is my little precious darling Shelly. So <laughs> we're just glad to be here. We are indeed. Let me share what we're going to do tonight, and then we're going to pray. Um, we're going to define grief. We'll look at the types of grief, because it's important to understand the biblical examples of grief, the symptoms of grief, and then how God provides the way out. You see, God understands our grief. We'll look at that. And God has a number of ways to bring us through that process and out of the valley of darkness. Mm. And then finally, we probably won't get to that tonight, but our final segment is going to be supporting those mm. who grieve. We need to learn how to be good supporters, not be like, you know, Job's friends started off right, mm. didn't they, when they were uh, just sitting with him, and then they got to be miserable <laughs> right? comforters, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so honey, you want to have a prayer, and we'll get started. Yes. Fathers, we come together today, the Sabbath day, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord, for being in our hearts and our minds. Thank you, Lord, that we can focus on you. And Father, we're just asking, Lord, that you be with us, especially with this particular topic, Lord, that through the aid of the Holy Spirit, we will be guided. Father, there's people around this world that have a happy smile, and but then on their hearts may be heavy. So for, Father, wherever we fit, we just think that we can call upon your name and know that you have ears to hear. Be with us, take care of us, and guide us. We ask this in the name of Jesus, amen. 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 You know, in putting this syllabus together, I thought, well, the first thing we ought to do is define grief. And it means a lot of different things to different people, but I like what God gave me. Human grief is a God-given emotion. Mm. We should never be ashamed if we are mm -hmm. grieving. It's an emotion of deep sorrow and pain that suffers from life-altering mm -hmm. events or even identity altering events. Mm -hmm. So I've come up with two sides to the coin. The internal, and I'm gonna ask you to read that if you will, Angela, what the internal side, uh, on one side is grief and you flip that coin and you've got mourning and lamentations. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the intern or the grief part of it. Okay, internal sorrow. Experience in the face of loss without hope, a person mm. can be swallowed by sadness. Mm -hmm. mm. So so the internal part, when you have that sense of loss, has anybody here ever been, I have been mm -hmm. 
swallowed by sadness mm -hmm. before I learned to turn it over to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, totally swallowed. Mm -hmm. But that's one side of the coin. That's the grief side. When, when you've got a loss that you're facing and it's so painful mm -hmm. and you need to have hope. Mm -hmm. Hope is what God will give us. We'll look mm -hmm. at that. And hope will help you come out on the other side. Mm -hmm. But what's the flip side of the coin, Ian? Uh, so that would be the external. Okay. You know, the external expression. You know, so what Angela brought up was the internal part where you're kind of, you know, you're holding things mm -hmm. inwardly, but the, then you also have the external where you're expressing it mm -hmm. outwardly, where you could see it on that person, you know, physical, um, you know, mm -hmm. physical features that they're expressing yeah. grief. So that's mm -hmm. the grief side is internal. You mm -hmm. flip it. And you've got the mourning side. Right. When you're mourning, the the lamenting, you're crying, you're wailing. Mm -hmm. And these these are very real emotions. God gave them to us. So let's I want to say one thing. This is a disclaimer. What we're talking about here tonight, we're not presenting ourselves as psychology mm -hmm. experts. Right. This won't be complete. This is just kind of, we're going to look at some types of grief and go around the table and share these just to get our gears going. This is not professional psychological uh, categories, mm -hmm. but this is just what hit my mind. And we want to start, uh, Darrell, sure. with the types of grief. Sure. The first type of grief is anticipatory grief, which is categorized as it could be a child's Ill illness a loved one with dementia or Alzheimer's, a loved one in hospice or an impending divorce. Mm -hmm. so, so have you ever been there in that kind of, I remember when my mother was dying, mm -hmm. there was a grieving process in anticipation. That's what it is, anticipatory. Have you ever been there where you're grieving right. before it happens? Mm -hmm. And yeah. JD's father yeah. had Alzheimer's. Talk yeah. about your mother's grief that yeah. she went through for a couple yeah. of years, you know? Yeah. yeah, and those are things that you can see and you, and then you can start feeling right. and you want to do something. And, you know, he, I remember he was asking Shelly one time, you know, says, that's not right, is it? Bless his little heart. He had come to that crossroads of con confusion mm -hmm. that he was beginning to question himself. And uh, so that you're and involved. Through, yeah. 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 Yep. But, you so. know, Nancy Reagan called Alzheimer's the long goodbye. There's a grieving process mm -hmm. that people go through. Yep. My, my, my great grandmother had Alzheimer's. And for the longest while, uh, she used to watch me when I was a, a child. Mm -hmm. And everything was fine. But then there started to be some strange things that she would do. Like she had a, a little doll that she called her baby. And at that time, in our child, childish ignorance, we thought, you know, this is funny. Yeah. But as I got older, I realized this is serious because your loved one is being taken away from yeah. you sl slowly. slowly. They don't know it. And you're having to watch them. You're trying to tell them, you know, who you are and things like that. I remember one time we went to a grocery store on one uh, Sunday afternoon after church. And she's in the, in the taxi with me, uh, my, my grandparents' taxi. And my grandparents went into the store. And so as we're sitting there, she says, I need to go somewhere. And so I'm, I'm just a little child. And she's like, no, I need to. I said, just, just grandma, just, just stay there. Everything's going to be fine. Um, I'm just like, where's my Nana and Papa <laughs> to rescue me? And so when um, I tried to, I locked the door. She somehow knew how to unlock the door. So then she's trying to open the door. So I'm trying to keep her from. And she gripped me with a strength that, I mean, she, if she was in her right mind, she would never have done that. Mm. But she just gripped me and I just let, let her go and she got out of the taxi and she just went off. And when my grandparents came and said, you know, what happened? I just broke down and it was in that moment that I realized what they had been experiencing already. They, they knew what um, she was going through with her Alzheimer's. And then just to see her as time went on, mm. she, went, she went from there, functional, to now she's in the uh, hospital. Um, and she's, she's now in the care of those at the hospital uh, permanently, and she's in the bed. And after she was bedridden, then she started to deteriorate. Mm. And I'm, I'm seeing her just 
become a shell of herself. Mm. And it's like, had I known that, and anybody in my family, had we known that early on, that this is what it was, those, I mean, could, would you say goodbye? I mean, it's just yeah. like, like you said, it's a long yeah. goodbye. Um, but you know, and it, what the thing is, is that people don't realize when you talk with somebody that's a caretaker mm -hmm. in this, you know, if somebody's on hospice uh, and your loved one's on hospice or you're worried about your child has gotten a serious diagnosis or you're, you're being the caretaker for somebody like with Alzheimer's or dementia, those caretakers, those loved ones start going through a mm -hmm. grieving process. Mm -hmm. It's an anticipatory, they're mm -hmm. anticipating what's gonna happen. That's very human, mm -hmm. totally. Mm -hmm. So, Sasha, let's look at the second type. And next we have grief from loss of relationship. Mm -hmm. Examples include divorce, a loved one on drugs or alcohol, the death of a loved one, especially suicide, that's particularly difficult to deal with for many. Um, your child rejects you or walks away from the Lord. Miscarriage or infertility and death of a pet. And I would include even losing, them, losing a pet, not Amen. to death, but you know, that you go through a grieving process with that. Yes. Well, and you know, and the, the point that we're trying to make here is help us identify because not everybody that loses a pet mm -hmm. grieves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there are some people who their pets like their child mm -hmm. and or they become very emotionally attached mm -hmm. to that pet. Yeah. And when you lose that pet, you grieve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But have, have any of you, I'm not, I know. He just lost his kitty. Mm -hmm. So oh. when he lost <laughs> Gracie. She only yeah. had three legs. We called her mm -hmm. tripod. Oh, yeah. So when that was, he was grieving over that. Yeah. yeah. It, it was rough only because, you know, uh, we've lost pets before in the past and it, it's always been tough, you know, and because like you said, they become like, like family. Mm -hmm. But this, this cat, and we, I've never had a cat. I'm not particularly a cat person, but this one just, we yeah. clicked with each other. And I had found her underneath our chicken coop and it, you know, she was missing one of her legs. So mm. I kind of helped her take, you know, get back and, and took her to the vet and took care of her and Amen. you know from a very little baby kitten and then all of a sudden something happened to her maybe like a year and a half later and, and she just mm -hmm. unexpectedly died mm -hmm. so we didn't even you know we thought she was happy and healthy yeah. and everything else and all of a sudden that was she hard. wasn't so it was tough you know I'm sorry for that loss because it does hurt. Mm -hmm. And I remember when our little puppy died and I had to come do a, I went home and found, well, he was 18, but went home and found him dead and mm -hmm. had to come back. I just ran home to change to come do a live. Wow. And I came back and I was like, my Aww. baby, you know? Mm -hmm. And everybody said, don't talk about it. Don't you cry. Don't you cry. You've got to do a live. We don't understand. And, and the reason we're putting in these categories. Mm -hmm. I know that, how many of us here have lost a parent? Mm -hmm. Has it, I, I know we've lost both of ours, you've lost yours, you've lost your mother, but your mm -hmm. father's still alive. Yes. Right? And those are, I, I've lost all of my blood mm -hmm. relatives, you know, I've lost my, my sister. And uh, we understand grieving in that perspective. But I'm gonna tell you, when my sister was doing drugs and had walked away from the family, I grieved mm -hmm. for her then. Um, when we found out we couldn't have a child, nobody, he didn't even know, but I was wanted six kids and I grieved all alone because I didn't know who to even talk to. Mm -hmm. And it was the death of a vision. Mm -hmm. But so a miscarriage, when some, you know, some people are like, well, there's probably something wrong with the fetus anyway. You'll get over it. You know, God will give you enough. Mm -hmm. We've got to allow people to grieve. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult. And, and we're going to get to your story. You're the only one here that has lost a spouse. But that's, it's life altering. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And it's identity altering. Yes, it definitely is. You know, so, all right. Um, if I if I may, real sure. quick, also I just there's something that you know, and it always when I see the word or somebody even talks about it, it just it I resonate with it, and and that's suicide. Mm -hmm. You know, especially mm -hmm. um, coming from a military background, 
That is something very difficult and, uh, and unfortunately something that occurs very often in, across all the services, whether active duty or veteran. A lot of the, the service members don't know how to handle a lot of the things that they're exposed to, um, including myself. I was one of those people who didn't know how to handle some of the things that I, I had done and some of the things I experienced and uh, obviously a mix also of some other things that were in my life. But, you know, suicide, we, there was a, a slogan I don't know if they still have it uh, now, but it was called uh, 22 a day because the military, whether it was including both active duty and veterans, we were, there was approximately 22 suicides mm. wow. a day. Wow. Um, and these were just individuals that did not know how to handle the loss that they were experiencing and the things that they were going through. And maybe, you know, some of these types of griefs, when I look at them, I can see, you know, the, our, our brothers in arms, the, those who had served in the military, experiencing a lot of these and um, you know it happened in units that I was in soldiers that were in my my unit who had committed suicide and you know it's a ripple effect all the way down we used to always say it's um, you know it's a permanent solution to a, a temporary problem yeah. mm -hmm. and it's just um, you know my heart really goes out to those who are struggling with even thoughts of it you know what I was just thinking as you were talking mm -hmm. suicide people if somebody has had a friend or a relative uh, my mother attempted suicide several mm -hmm. times and I remember as a little girl thinking how's this possible it, it's not just that you're grieving them but the reason that they committed suicide is they were grieving something mm -hmm. they would lost all hope and when you said I that's a great way to say it. It's mm -hmm. a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Mm -hmm. We don't realize that our problems are temporary if we take them to the Lord. Amen. 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 But it's a very painful thing, and we're seeing this. We just got a phone call last night that uh, one of our nephew's friends, a little 15-year-old boy, excelling in school, intelligent, getting all kinds of awards, who committed suicide and we're seeing that so much right now so the the idea that we're not just talking about grieving after it happens really mm -hmm. there's a grieving process that's going on in these kids that are committing suicide mm -hmm. they don't see the way out and that's why it's so important for us to understand the process recognize the symptoms and to understand that God does mm -hmm. provide way out because yeah. that's one of the things that I think um, a lot are missing when it comes to to suicide is that hope mm -hmm. um, that okay. God provides I mean there's it, that's usually the last thing that people are holding on to it's that last bit of hope and when yep. they lose that you know that's kind of where they finally decide you know to to move forward with with suicide and recently um, I did a, a, a sermon at, at Thompsonville and I talked about my own experience and I won't really go into that right now but I carry um, in my wallet. I take it with me everywhere. I still have my bracelet from when I was in um, a, mil a military medical facility because I was under suicide watch. There was a time in my life where I wanted to take my own life and I was admitted in there and I still carry my, my bracelet with me just as a reminder mm -hmm. because I wasn't Christian then and now I am and I can see just what God has done in my life from that moment up until now so I, I carry it with me as a reminder. Mm -hmm. So is it, would you say it's fair to say that anybody that is contemplating suicide has been swallowed by sorrow? Oh, absolutely. They've been swallowed up in a dark hole. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what, you know, we said at the very beginning, without hope, we don't see the way out, but God will provide the way out. May I mm -hmm. say just one thing? Sure. You know, I was at the service where Ian shared his testimony about his um, thoughts of suicide and what stood out to me the most is that you saw your son sitting mm -hmm. there. He was in the room with his son and he saw his son sitting on the couch and it was looking at his son that made him change his mind. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to encourage viewers that if you're thinking of that, just remember that it's going to affect other people that love you mm -hmm. and it's not the way out. No, no it's mm -hmm. not. Yeah. You know, the number three uh, of which uh, Sasha, you can uh, identify, uh, kind of brings uh, brings maybe a little bit of clarity on this. On, I think know, that's Ian's. Ian's? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, sure, I'll read. Yeah. Uh, so number three is uh, grief over loss of identity. Yeah. And it says identity altering illness, yeah. financial disruption, uh, disruptions or downturn, loss of a home, 
in fire or flood. And these are just a few examples. They are just a, mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, this is something that uh, my fiance in college, before, yeah. this was <laughs> free JD, but um, they lost their home to a fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what his mother told me? She said, it was like going through a death. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. said, I grieved, we lost our identity. Mm -hmm. We lost all of our photos. We lost all of our heirlooms that had been passed down. We lost all the kids, uh, their, their school papers and stuff. She said, it, it wasn't just that we lost our passports and this, that, but she said, we lost who we were in that mm -hmm. fire. Mm -hmm. And you know, you think about people that have been through these fires or even, you know, even most recently in the Texas panhandle where people mm -hmm. are losing their homes. But it's also something that sometimes people who lose everything financially and they've, we had a dear friend that his business partner did something and they went from being multimillionaires to living in a little duplex. And his wife had a really hard time. Now he was, we always called him, he had the Midas touch. He, he did, God led him and he restored mm -hmm. their fortunes. But she had a really difficult time because it's identity mm -hmm. altering. Mm -hmm. When you think of an identity altering illness, I can speak to that because over the last, when I had my back surgery and my shoulder surgery just a few years back, I remember I was so limited in what I could do. And this was only about a year ago, so it's several years into it, but I'm still facing all that. And one day I got to experiencing a little pity party. And I'm gonna tell you this, please don't be upset for me using this word, but self-pity is straight from the pits of hell. It's from Satan. He's putting those thoughts in your mind. Mm -hmm. But I was like, Lord, I don't even know who I am anymore. I don't recognize myself. I was grieving mm -hmm. the loss of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Lord set me straight in a hurry and said, your identity is in me. Mm -hmm. And I found that my way out is always to give him thanksgiving and praise and he, mm -hmm. he props me up. But good. This is something that we have to understand. When people go through a life, uh, some, some event that alters their identity, mm -hmm. they grieve. Mm -hmm. right. It's very much so. Okay, Angela. Before you move on, can I just go out on oh, a limb sure. here? Um, I'm gonna include in this category, like marriage and having children mm -hmm. could, mm -hmm help make you lose your identity. Like you mm. have to get used to living this new version of yourself. Mm. And sometimes it's a hard transition. But um, if we acknowledge that, yes, a grieving yeah. does take place, then you know maybe people who get married newlyweds don't feel so guilty for feeling like, oh no. I remember when I first got married, one night I was lying in bed and I was just crying because I'm just, my life is not the same anymore. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I, was, I was happy to be married. It was, it was one of the best decisions of my life. But, um, you know, you just have to li learn to live a new life. And, you know, I remember one morning waking up on a Sunday. I woke up late, getting ready to have my personal devotion. And then Darrell says, well, let's have worship together. But I'm like, but I want to do my devotional my way the time that I was. <laughs> and now looking back, I'm grateful that I have a husband who has a desire to study with me. But you know, in the moment you can, you're self-pitying a little bit and selfish, yeah. but you have to get used so, to this new way of life. And so, so the good thing is you can feel uh, upended and you're finding a new rhythm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but, Transition. Uh, but uh, our new tradition stuff, yeah. but you didn't get into such sorrow that you stayed in that for right. a long time yeah. because it I mean, was a good event, but yes. there are, it's true. Yeah. We've got to be sensitive to people because most, somebody at home might be saying, marriage, why would you grieve mm -hmm. over losing your identity in marriage? Well, it's, it's kind of difficult for mm -hmm. some, for others, it's just mm -hmm. a, you know, a given, no big yeah. deal. So it's different from person to person. Mm -hmm. Angela, you wanna do number four? Sure, community grief, destruction from natural disasters, earthquakes, tornadoes, fires, massive shootings, wars, humanitarian crisis. 
Yeah. So let's talk to that one. Hmm. I have a, a slightly a, a different um, one that's mentioned. I remember when we were in high school, Sasha, who was in the year above me, she had finished, I believe, and um, it, it was in my last year of high school. And the favorite teacher of most of the high schoolers, um, his name was Mr. Hill, um, he was the high school um, history teacher. And he was the type of person who was very firm, but he was also very likable or lovable. And um, I just remember at one point along that journey, he had helped me with some things um, in school. And so I saw him kind of as a mentor, looked up to him, and so many other people did. And I remember at some point he um, was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and so because he's like your hero, he was very athletic, very healthy. You just figure he's gonna bounce back. Everybody just thought he's gonna bounce back. And then as you see him deteriorating, I remember one time I saw him, this is a, a number of months after he had stopped coming to school because he was just so sick, and I saw him in a wheelchair, and he was so mm. thin and mm. frail. I said, no, that's, that's not Mr. Hill, you know? I, this is, he was, like I said, he was strong mm. and, and fit. And then um, I remember one day I was at school, and I just happened to be in the computer lab and none of the, the other school, my school, other schoolmates had found out, but we got news that he passed, mm -hmm. uh, had just passed. And so now I'm like, I have this news, I'm, I'm broken, um, but he has a large amount of family in the school. And I just remember when they finally gave the news that he had passed away, you have now a school mm -hmm. in mourning. Mm -hmm. And sure. it's, what do you, I mean, it's you know, community the, grief. Yes. And so like, you know, you, they say we have counselors available and things like that. Mm -hmm. And there's people, you know, crying and it's just, it was a very tough moment. Um, and I think it was such a, a, a pivotal point in my life that it had stuck with me for many years because I saw him as a mentor. I saw him as very fit and healthy. And then he ended up dying at a, a young age. He was in his early forties, I think. Um, but I always l was like, well, what hope is there for me? Mm. You know, when I've had health mm. challenges, I'm like, is the Lord trying to tell me that the same thing is going to happen to me? Mm -hmm. You know, I have a family. He had a family. He had a young son. He had a wife, mm -hmm. um, beautiful family. And then he just dies. I mean, <laughs> didn't the Lord <laughs> know that he, his family needed him? Um, and I'm like, well, if the, what, what hope is there for me? Um, you know, you start to believe, well, maybe I'm expendable. Um, you know, and, and it, wasn't, it wasn't until I found out who God really was mm -hmm. that some of those thoughts started to be suppressed. And I can imagine what the rest of my schoolmates mm -hmm. were going through who were close with him and looked up to him. And so that, for me, was uh, a time of community grief. Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of have to deal with it individually, though. Yeah. Um, still. <laughs> so is it, did it, I, I just want to ask you a question on it. So was that like, that was early on where you, it started to question who God was or his identity? Yeah, I mean. It, well, or made you question it? Well, the thing is, after my last year in high school, after I went out, um, I ended up going into the world. Mm. Um, I believe things like that were pivotal times that kind mm. of made me question like, well, you know, if, if God, you know, really, I didn't have my father in my life as well. Oh. So he was kind of like a father figure. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wow. And so it was like, I don't know what a, a father is supposed to be like, so I'm not going to submit to God. I'm not going to, that word submit and, and to a father. It's just like, right. it, I just couldn't resonate with it. And so that's why I just started to drift away from my upbringing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I believe that that was one of the components that led me to go out into the world. Because I remember when I went to college, I saw uh, a brick that was laid on the college campus. It just so happens that one of his other, maybe his sibling, went to, um, was a part of the, the faculty. And they had laid a brick with his name on it. Mm. And I walk up to the brick and I, was, I just stumbled on it. And I was like, Mendel Hill. I was like, I just can't get away from this. Mm. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. this must be my, <laughs> yeah. you mm. almost feel like it's my destiny. I'm, I'm, but mm. I'm like, no. Um, What's interesting <laughs> is that mm. this was 
You were grieving the loss of a relationship, which mm -hmm. you went through with, like, your husband. So it was, it may have hit you. It, I mean, community grief, yes, the whole school grieved. But for you, it sounds like it was a lot deeper, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But can you imagine what it's like at these schools mm -hmm. where the mass shootings and all of these children are killed? Right. What kind of level of community grief are people going through there? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we used to do, I don't know if you remember when you were little, in school you used to do, you know, earthquake drills or tornado drills or fire drills. Now the kids are mm -hmm. doing you know, mass shooting drills, yeah. and, mm -hmm. you know, and Cold blue. yeah, and if kids, you know, I remember because when you used to do, uh, when she was a, a teacher, pre-K teacher, you know, they would do it at that school too, that if there was an intruder, you know, mm -hmm. and they, teaching these little kids, what was it pre-K? It was pre-K, mm -hmm. right? So there's these little kids, you know, four years old and teaching them what to do in case there's a mass That's shooting, it's, it, you know, it's, mm -hmm. we never had to go through that and you just see how things are, are you know, regressing. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to bring up COVID, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. churches were shutting down, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. and, that's, uh, that's a community. It is, it is, it is, it is the community of the church. And there were so many people and, were dying. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm still talking with people that will call in and they bring, and they bring it in, uh, bring it up, you know, that, mm -hmm. hey, our churches are still only half full because of something that happened two yeah. years ago. Right. And yeah. people are, yeah. so the... I was thinking the same thing because I remember when COVID hit and you'd have to go to the store and pick up a few things and everybody had on a mask mm -hmm. and the stores were quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody was saying anything. And it was such a somber atmosphere in the store. Mm -hmm. It was like a spirit of grief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Life wasn't the same anymore. Everybody was yeah. isolated. Yeah. 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 So let's look at number, f uh, the fifth area. We've looked at anticipatory grief, grief from the loss of a relationship, loss of identity. There's community grief. Well, the fifth type of grief that we're going to look at is delayed grief. And that's basically where we want to just stuff it and mm. get busy doing something else and not really acknowledge yeah. that we're grieving. Or maybe we don't even realize that we're grieving like mm -hmm. we talked about earlier. But uh, we just kind of dive into work and, and distractions, mm -hmm. and yes. um, that can cause psychological manifestations, uh, you know, physical manifestations and aches mm -hmm. and pains in our body and that kind of thing. Um, but grief will not be denied. It's going to come out, and sometimes it comes out in the next tragic uh, event that happens in your life. Mm -hmm. So yeah. mm -hmm. that's what we would call delayed grief. Amen. And, you know, that's, I've always said that grief will not be denied. Mm. A friend whose husband died and he told her, do not grieve mm. when I die. Mm. And so she took that very seriously. Mm -hmm. And she kept saying, I'm not gonna be one of those grieving widows. I, I, you know, I'm sad, but I'm not allowing myself to grieve. And I told her, you're gonna have to go through the mm -hmm. grieving process. Mm -hmm. I said, it will not be denied. Yeah. And you can try to stuff it but it's going to come. I've seen people do this, you know, six months after a death of a spouse or something. Then they totally go apart or, I mean, and, and it took her almost a year. Mm -hmm. And now it's, you know, she just couldn't get traction because she was trying to deny her grief. Please don't tell your children not to grieve. You can tell them, don't languish in grief for me. Just cry and get over it. Because, you know, but don't tell people not to grieve. Don't make them feel guilty for grief. Yeah, the Bible says grieve, don't grieve as those who have no hope. It doesn't say yes. don't grieve. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I think there's another thing that we need to remember, and that is be kind. Be a good person. Mm -hmm. right. You know, you have no idea who's is experiencing some, some type of grief. I mean, mm -hmm. we're sitting here normally, we probably, I never really thought about grieving that away or that was a... a but I remember my cousin did that and this and did it. Mm -hmm. So it is nice to be able to identify, but the lesson that I'm kept picking up from this is just continue to uh, be there to listen, mm -hmm. be there ready in, ready in season to have a prayer or whatever, you know, and uh, allow people instead of just saying, how you doing there? Oh man, you look good, <laughs> you know, and, uh, <laughs> and they're sitting there and their hearts just breaking and if he just knew, you know. And, right, because uh, you're seeing so, something common here is each yep. and every one of us has experienced in yep. some way, shape or form, yep. you know, one of these or, or maybe even a different one type of, of grief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so 
We see a lot of times, you know, we, we also talked about the internal and the external earlier. A lot of times people put a facade up, mm -hmm. you know, and they're walking down the halls and work or you see them at, you know, at church and they're just, oh, you know, they look like everything is fine, but internally mm -hmm. they are struggling and a lot, a lot of times we don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, you know, you might have those one moment, one or few moments where somebody just, you know, out of character does something or says something and you're like, you know, what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's because they're internalizing yeah. something, some kind of grief and it, that falls into one of these categories that they just either never processed, could even be from childhood, mm -hmm. something that they've never processed. Mm -hmm. And now it's just, they're carrying it with them and you don't even know. And so that's why I love that you said just, you know, be kind. Yeah. Because you have no, no idea. I know old school is, uh, you're to be seen, mm -hmm. not heard, <laughs> and and you know, and you internalize that. And as the years go by, you know, you be, you really don't speak out a lot. You don't really complain a lot, mm -hmm. because those seeds were planted at a young age. Or how about this one, when somebody says to you, "Crying is not going to bring your mother back." That's not, mm -hmm. you know, like like mm -hmm. okay, you've had three days of crying. Yeah. Pull yourself up by your yeah. boots. Yeah, and I was going to say, like, don't undermine people's grief. Right. Like, they could be going through something that you think is slight, but don't mm -hmm. undermine it if they're having these physical manifestations. They're crying. They're mm -hmm. doing whatever. Like, yeah. Well, let, let's look at some biblical examples of grief because we want you to understand grief is not, you know, some people invalidate their feelings because they feel like if if I confess to my sorrow, if I confess to being overwhelmed, it's like I'm not acting in faith. God would not have you invalidate your grief. He gave you those emotions. And mm -hmm. you know, uh, the Bible tells us in Genesis 23 that Abraham mourned the death of Sarah. We know that Jacob, who wants to read Genesis 37, 34, and 35? This is, this is Jacob mourning when he thought Joseph was, he was told Joseph was dead. Uh, you want to read that, sure. Deborah? Uh It says, Then Jacob tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus, his father wept for him. Mm -hmm. Jacob was one of the patriarchs with whom God had renewed the covenant of righteousness by faith with him. Yet he's grieving. God doesn't correct him for this. Mm -hmm. um, other examples, we've got Joseph mourn the death of his father Jacob when Jacob died after they were reunited. And we see that in Genesis chapter 50, Jacob is embalmed and then 40 days after they started the trek uh, to, uh, to go back to Canaan, take his body from Egypt to Canaan. And once they got to Canaan for the burial, Genesis 50, 10 tells us, that Joseph, and this is now, it's close to 70 days or 60 days at this point. He observed seven more days of mourning. Mm. So mourning, crying, grieving, uh, mourning is the external of the internal, what's going on. But it's something that um, God does uh, approve of. Somebody read a couple more about Aaron and Moses. Somebody. I was actually going to um, point out two places in the beginning of the Bible, in Genesis 4 and Genesis 6, where God himself grieved. Mm. Um, I, a lot of times, you know, in, in, my, in the past when I've read about God talking to Cain, that's the first one, God talking to Cain, mm -hmm. um, after he's killed his brother, um, it, you, as a parent, you can always think of the disciplinary side, like he's just disciplining him. But God in that moment was grieving mm -hmm. the loss of Abel. He says, the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? I can imagine God, his heart is broken. He's mm -hmm. like, how could mm -hmm. you do this? Yes. Um, 
And then on top of that, as Cain responds with his stubbornness and, and rebellion, it, it's like a dagger in the heart yes. um, mm -hmm. over. And that was just the beginning. And then the culmination of that just before the flood, when it says, uh, now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. And, and then it goes in verse um, five, it says, then the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Then it says, and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. Amen. And another version actually says that it broke his heart. And so grieving is a, pers is a person who has a broken heart, mm -hmm. a broken spirit. And so it's like if God himself can grieve, mm -hmm. then surely his, his, the, the creatures who were created in his image should have every right to grieve. And nobody told God how he was to grieve. Mm -hmm. I mean, just imagine what he was going through. And, mm -hmm. and we're going to look at that in just a moment, no. that God understands our grief. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Bible talks about mm -hmm. the Father, the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. being grieved. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. something that, as you said, this is an emotion that God experiences and it certainly, we were created in his image. It's certainly something that's been passed on to us. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting to me, you find in Numbers, when Aaron mm -hmm. the priest died, they mourned him for 30 days. When Moses died, we find in Deuteronomy 34, they mourned. The whole nation gathered and mourned for 30 days. They mourned, Israel gathered and mourned the prophet Samuel. King David mourned the death of his son, Abner, even when Abner was trying to seize the throne from him. We find the book of Lamentations. Mm. Oh my goodness, mm. Jeremiah is wailing <clears throat> over Israel's captivity by Babylon and especially the destruction of the temple. And then why don't you tell us a couple of the New Testament ones? Well, Mary and Martha mm -hmm. uh, were mourning Lazarus. And when Jesus arrived at the tomb, we're told that Jesus wept. And I found this beautiful quote from the Desire of Ages uh, that really touched my heart. It says, it was not only because of the scene before him that Christ wept, the weight of the grief of ages was upon him. Mm -hmm. He saw the terrible effects of the transgression of God's law. He saw that in the history of the world, beginning with the death of Abel, the conflict between good and evil had been unceasing. Looking down the years to come, he saw the suffering and sorrow, tears and death that were to be the lot of men. His heart was pierced with the pain of the human family of all ages and in all lands. The woes of the sinful race were heavy upon his soul and the fountain of his tears was broken up as, lo as he longed to relieve all their distress. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. so Pamela, when, when Mary and Martha were weeping, <laughs> did she, I mean, Angela, yeah, I knew I did that. Pamela is her daughter. <laughs> Angela, when Mary and Martha were weeping, did Jesus come and say, dry your tears? No, 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 no. no. He identified Jesus. with them. Mm -hmm. he, had, he was weeping, not mm -hmm. just over their sorrow, and identifying with their sorrow. Mm -hmm. But as you said, he's, he's seeing the, everything from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. he's but still he went to Jairus' house mm -hmm. to raise, and, and they were playing the flutes. And we see that they even hired mourners back there. So the point to tell you this, mm -hmm. we want to get into some of the symptoms of grief. Uh, and then we're going to, uh, it'll be next week when we're talking about, or in our next program, when we'll talk about how God understands, how he comforts us, and then how he uses us to comfort others. But I think this is important. There's two types of grief. There's normal grief, and then there's complicated grief. Mm. Who wants to go through these, uh, some of the symptoms of normal grief? I can go ahead and read it. Okay. So normal grief, some of the symptoms are sorrow, crying, uh, numbness, guilt, anger, uh, consuming thoughts of what you have uh, lost, sleepless nights, overeating or undereating. Um, and then some of the other things, it's, you know, gradually ease over a period of six months to a year. So that's, that's normal grief yeah. is, right. is six months to a year wow. is quite normal. 
And, and you know, in fact, I remember my aunt, bless her heart, she said something that she didn't even realize she'd said to me. I use it all the time. And I reminded her that she said this, and I said, I didn't even, she said, I didn't know I said it. But it was about four or five years after my uncle had died, and they'd been married 50 years. And I asked her, how are you really? Because she was at our home, and, you know, we talked every week. But she said, well, you know, it took me a year to get my feet underneath me. Mm and another year to walk without wobbling. Mm. Wow. And we're gonna get to your story. So normal grief, um, it should be easing. Go ahead. Where are we? Go ahead with that. Okay, so um, individual accepts reality uh, of their loss, expresses emotional pain, and then finally adjusts to the new reality. Mm -hmm. Finding a new rhythm to mm -hmm. life, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, weeping primary indication of grief, like we talked about earlier with mm -hmm. Mary and Martha wept over uh, mm -hmm. the brother Lazarus. Tears are repeatedly mentioned in scripture. We read in, in Psalm 42, three, my tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to me, where is your God? Mm -hmm. As well as Psalm 56, eight, which says, you number my wanderings, put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? Amen. Yeah. So normal, normal grief, all of these symptoms, you know, people, some people have a tendency to just, they don't want to eat at all. Some people overeat. Mm -hmm. and, and you see, I had a friend who was raped mm. and she put on a hundred pounds in the first year. Mm. She was grieving and, and, it, but and she ended up in complicated grief and severe depression and had to have counseling. And I want, Angela, why don't you just read some of the symptoms of complicated grief? Sure. Have trouble carrying out normal routines, mm. isolate from others and withdraw, withdraw from social activities, mm. experience depression, deep sadness, guilt or self-blame, that's a big one. Believe that you did something wrong or could have prevented the death. Feel life isn't worth living without your loved one, mm -hmm. wish you had died along with your loved one. And then have suicidal thoughts. And these are all according to Mayo Clinic on this complicated. But mm -hmm. when, when we're talking about, like you said, guilt or self-blame, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. What made you say that? Just when you go through depression or you go through grieving, sometimes you feel it's your fault. Mm -hmm. What and could you do differently? Yeah, mm -hmm. and boy, if somebody has committed suicide, mm -hmm. you just be around the people mm -hmm. who are left behind. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Because that's what they're all going through. Yeah. We experienced that, if I could just share briefly. Uh, my husband had a good friend. Um, they had played in a little garage band together and uh, his friend was experiencing some depression and he had went to the doctor and they gave him a medication and it, it made it more severe mm -hmm. and he became suicidal and his wife called us and said and we had not been um, really interacting with them much because we had become Christians and they had not given their heart to Christ but the wife called us and said I'm really worried about him um, and so my husband went over to see him and he tried to encourage him and talk with him and uplift him well, sad to say, it was only about two or three days later and his friend took his life. Mm -hmm. And my husband went through a grief, you know, because mm -hmm. he had just seen him a few days before mm -hmm. and he kept saying, well, I could have said something different. I could have mm -hmm. done something different. I could have prevented this. And so, yeah, totally, mm -hmm. that, that is what happens when mm -hmm. you go through yeah. that. And that was the saddest funeral that we ever went to because it didn't have to happen. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, um, has anybody ever been in complicated grief? Hmm. I have. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it just a little. Well, I mean, I already touched on it a little because when I ended up in... Yeah, that's complicated grief. Yeah. Um, for me, I didn't process things very well uh, well, when it, I was grief, younger. That, and, and I think even if, you don't, even if you do process normally, when you get yeah. into a grieving process, it can impair your cognitive function, really. Yeah, I mean, I agree. sorrow can do that. But for, for me, I, it was just kind of a lot of trauma was hitting me at once. And I, you know, I was already a, pretty much an alcoholic. Um, I used to drink quite a bit um, back in my younger time because I didn't know how to handle 
a lot of the stressors. So we talked earlier about, you know, you kind of regress or you, you pull away from, from people and that's kind of what I did. And I used other things to kind of drown out those, you know, that grieving that I was feeling inside, those depressing mm -hmm. thoughts that I was having and then ultimately the suicidal thoughts because when I drank sometimes it would go away, you know, and then, but because you wake up the next day, everything is still there. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it wasn't, uh, it's, you know, self-medicating mm -hmm. with, with, uh, with alcohol. Sometimes that self-medicating actually leads people to lose their inhibitions and go ahead and commit mm -hmm. suicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but, you know, praise God that didn't happen yeah. to me. So, but yeah, it was just, it, it was a lot of things. That complicated grief is, um, you know, especially in my case where I had a lot of things pouring in at once with, you know, marital problems. And then when my mom passed away, and then dealing with the stresses of the army, all of it were coming on top of me all at once. It was like, it was almost like the devil wanted me dead. Mm -hmm. uh, but Trust I me, he did. Oh, I'm sure, <laughs> looking back, I know. <laughs> Trust but, me. Uh, you know, but praise God for my Yeah, my, my grief boy. for dealing with all this <laughs> <laughs> was yeah. I would go throughout the day, just, you know, I had a son I had to take care of, I had a daughter I had to take care of. Right. So at night, that's when I grieved. I would go in the room and cry. Mm -hmm. and just cry myself to sleep mm -hmm. because of dealing with my husband, being unfaithful, drinking, you know. So that was a different kind of grief for me. Yeah. It was a, a, had to be strong and, you know, take on the day and, you know, live life, Not sometimes not wanting to live life, but had to for our, my children. Everything fell on me. So mm -hmm. it's a different kind of grief I had to go through. It was hard. It's very, very tough to process information. Go ahead, Shelley. Oh, I was just going to say, she's ready to Well, let's share jump that. Well, my story is pretty long, so I'm fine with waiting until the next program. But I, <laughs> <Okay>. can, <laughs> I can identify with a lot of this, especially, you know, isolation. You mm -hmm. shared about isolating. I can remember after my husband died, uh, I always found a reason why I didn't need to go to family functions. And my sister would call me and say, you're coming. I'm like, no, I don't want to come. I don't feel like it. I'm not up to it today. No, you need to come. But I did not want to be around people. So I isolated. Mm -hmm. And then there were days that I didn't really want to live. And um, I found this, this quote, if I could read it. I know we're short on time, but um, it's from um, Prophets and Kings. And this quote helped me so much through those days when I was like, I just don't want to do this anymore. I remembered reading this years ago and it says, into the experience of all, there comes times of keen disappointment and utter discouragement, days when sorrow is the portion and it's hard to believe that God is still the kind benefactor of his earthborn children. Days when troubles harass the soul till death seems preferable to life. And that's the part I would always remember that there will be days when death seems preferable to life. It is then that many lose their hold on God and are brought into the slavery of doubt, the bondage of unbelief. Could we at such times discern with spiritual insight the meaning of God's providences? We would see angels seeking to save us Amen. from ourselves, striving to plant our feet upon a foundation more firm than the everlasting hills and new faith new life would spring into being. Amen. 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 That's beautiful. Just real Amen. quickly. That is beautiful. You had counseling. Did you ever seek counseling? Um, we did. Good. Did you seek I counseling? I did not. You did not. So it was purely through the Bible and the, the Lord. Uh, grieving, you know, tonight, we're, this is grief the way out part one. We're just identifying the problem. And Trust me, oh, I hope you can tune in next time because everyone sitting at this table, every one of us have experienced deep levels of grief. I never got to the point of thinking of suicide, I mean of contemplating suicide, but I did get to the point where I understood mm -hmm. why my mother had tried it. And just that thought scared me to death. Mm -hmm. I remember laying there going, I understand why you did it, Mama. And then I thought, Whoa, if I can get this low. And, and the reason is there was no hope for her. Mm -hmm. Well, I want you to know there is hope. Mm -hmm. We are going to look in our next program mm -hmm. that God understands our grief. He grieves himself. Mm -hmm. He has ways to help us. And we're going to show you how the God of all comfort can bring you out. But we're also going to see how God teaches us to be good comforters to others. Mm -hmm. Because as you said earlier, this kindness, this listening ear, that's so important not to be judgmental. So 
Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you all. We want to wish you a happy Sabbath. We're out of time. We love you and we pray for you. Bye-bye. God bless you. Thank you.